the Rwanda Green Taxonomy is a classification system uh, that helps to define uh, which economic activities um, uh, are considered environmental, environmentally uh, sustainable. The Green Taxonomy is going to allow us to do two main things. From a resource mobilization uh, point of view, um, it, it now uh, sends a clear message um, to the world, uh, to the investors, that we have a clear definition of what we mean by, uh, by green. Kandi, um, this is also aligned with um, international standards. So it builds that confidence in an investor who's interested in investing in, uh, in, in green projects. Um, the second, uh, second objective, or, or the second, um, I would say, um, advantage of having the, the, the green taxonomy is from the project developer's side. Uh, we've had a challenge um, in that when we are, so I'm speaking now uh, in terms of the Rwanda Green Fund. When we, have, when we raise funding and we issue calls for applications and we look out for projects to invest in, it's been a challenge. Uh, because the projects we often uh, times receive and don't necessarily or are not designed uh, with, with that really strong element of, of, of green. So now that we have this classification and this definition and this standardization, it means that the project developers, be it public or private sector, can now have a, a sort of a guideline and, and, and the definition of the different technologies. Therefore, for the fund, it, it, it helps us to disperse funding faster um, because we're getting uh, a, good, uh, a good pipeline. As you know, uh, uh, Rwanda ha has, uh, has made a very bold and, and ambitious decision to develop in a, in a climate compatible manner. So this is uh, translated in our vision 2050, we want to be a carbon neutral economy by 2050. We have very clear strategies, uh, whether it's the green growth strategy, whether it's within our NST2. Uh, and I think the key message here is not just focusing on the green, but it's more of how do we develop? So looking at our national priorities, looking at the economic development, how do we ensure that this is developed in a, you know, but also with that conscious of environmental sustainability. Now, it's one thing to have strategies. So we have strategies, we have very clear policies, we have, you know, the Randa Green Fund, we have investment vehicles, but this is even going a step further. It's a tool on how you get to, which really helps us to, 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 to define because as much as you have the policies and the strategies, at the end of the day, we can only achieve this if we have projects that are designed uh, with, you know, with, with, this, with this objective of making sure that we achieve our, our goals. So the green taxonomy really builds on all these strategies and these policies and acts as that tool that helps both the public sector and the private sector. I also want to emphasize the financial institutions. Um, because for the longest time, or and this is just worldwide, um, the biggest challenge that financial institutions, let's say commercial banks, um, you know, face when it comes to investing in green projects, is that there's that risk, you know, the, the, the risk profile of, of a green project. Because these you know, green projects come with innovation and techno new technologies. And usually commercial banks, obviously, or any, on any financial institution expects a return on investment. So whenever there's a new technology that comes with a risk. So whenever they, so when they're perceived as risk, or even when the risk is actually there, then we don't see a lot of funding or a lot of the financial sector deploying funding to the to the to the, to, 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 to green projects. So now again, this taxonomy will also help the financial sector to it, it, it serves as a framework which can also help the financial sector to assess environmental risks better. And so we hope that uh, we will also start seeing more and more, um, you know, deployment of funding from the financial sector going to the green, green, green sector. From an SME uh, perspec perspective, um, we, 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 the taxonomy will help them in a sense that they, they can develop. Now they have tools and, and further definitions that help them to, de to design projects that are green. So currently, uh, the, the biggest challenge is how do we disseminate information to these SMEs? So you fit a tool, now that we have this tool that goes into each sector, literally uh, agriculture, um, um, construction, energy. This is already something that any SME can begin with, can start with and say, okay, if I want to get funding from, from uh, the Green Fund or if I want to go and access a loan from BRD, I need to make sure that the project I take to them is actually aligned with this taxonomy. So, so it, 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 it basically, in a nutshell, it will help them 
to access financing, to access green financing faster and better. And I think just to close, it also helps us to address greenwashing, you know, because there's a lot of, oftentimes you can have SMEs or even, you know, or even uh, investors who claim they're investing in green. I could focus on more greenwashing, you know, eventually we don't really see the carbon emissions being reduced. So, when it, so this green taxonomy also really helps us to, to make sure that we are not greenwashing and, and we ensure that we are, uh, we are addressing the, 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 the sustainability, but also achieving our, our NDC goals. Thank you. Thank you.